everybody and welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This video is part of the Massively Open Online textbook and video format for the Introduction to Statistics. For more information and to find other portions of the book, check out mathandstatistics.com. This video is going to deal with how to start with raw data in Excel and then create a pie chart from that data using the method of pivot tables. And don't be alarmed about the pivot table portion. It's pretty straightforward, and I'm going to walk you through each of the steps. So let's first start with an Excel data set. Let me quickly review what is contained in this data set, and then we'll move on to creating a pie chart. Uh, most of my examples deal with the same data set, so once you become used to it, it should be a little bit easier also to follow along. This is a pretend data set. It has a variable called student ID. This variable is qualitative, discrete, and is a nominal variable. And I won't review them all, I promise, but just to make sure that these each make sense, student ID. The gender of the student, one represents female, two represents male. The height of the student, the GPA, a pretest score, a final exam score, the time of day of the final exam, this is interval data as far as the level of measurement, and the year in college that the student is in. Now in order to make a pie chart, we actually first have to ask the question, is the variable that we want to make a pie chart out of appropriate for pie charts? Pie charts specifically are graphs that are good for qualitative data, discrete data, and data that does not have a very large number of possible values. So as an example, year in college is great for a pie chart. A uh, student can be a first year, they can be a sophomore, they can be a junior, they can be a senior. There's only four possibilities here. This is definitely discrete, qualitative, and it is ordinal data because there is an order associated. Seniors are above first years. And so it's perfect for a pie chart. Alternatively, GPA would not be perfect for a pie chart as it stands as raw data. Now you can create a frequency table and put the GPA into that frequency table and then create a pie chart out of it, which is not part of this video. But as it stands, to create a pie chart, we're looking for data that is essentially categorized. Pie charts are good for comparing percentages. We might be interested in what are the different percentages of first years versus sophomores versus seniors versus juniors. So your very first step in creating any kind of graph is to make sure that you are in fact creating the right kind of graph for the data that you have. Uh, pie graph is good for this example, but not particularly useful for most of the other variables I have here. I could, of course, also use a pie graph to describe my gender. But let's go ahead and create a pie graph for the variable year in college. And we can see the kind of variable that is. Now, what I like to do in Excel is I like to keep my raw data intact. So whenever I want to create something or make calculations, I will generally copy whatever of my data I'm interested in doing some work on, in this case it's all the data for year in college, to grab the entire column I click up at the top of the column rather than in here somewhere. So if I click up here it actually grabs all of the data, grabs the entire column. If I press Control C on my computer uh, or if I right click and choose copy I can come down to the bottom and click this plus and this brings me to a second sheet. My, my first sheet is still there, so I can still toggle back and forth between them. Once I get to my second sheet, I can either hit Control and V to paste, or I can right click and paste the results right here. I want to go ahead and just paste everything. And so that pastes that particular column of data year in college. Now I want to show you what doesn't work in Excel so that you can see right away um, that this happens to everybody and it does not in fact work. One of the things that Excel will not do is I can't simply just select all this data, come over here to insert, come over here to pie charts, choose just a regular pie chart and expect it to make me a pie chart. It doesn't do that. It doesn't understand yet what this data is representing or how I want to represent it. So that's their first common error in, uh, in Excel, is thinking you can just take raw data and create a pie chart. So let's go ahead and click on this and press delete to get rid of it. And the easiest way 
to make pie charts and bar graphs and a number of other things is to use a pivot table. You can also do this by hand. So let's explain first what we're actually going to do. What we want to do here is we want Excel to take each one of these categories like first year, we want it to take sophomore, we want it to take junior, and I'm just copying and pasting them over here so you can see them, and we want it to take senior. So this is, this is the type, or the year in school we'll call it. And we want to know the frequency or the count. In other words, how many? How many of them do we have relatively? If we have a count or a frequency or whatnot, we can then compare these. And that's what Excel understands. But we don't actually want to go through and say, okay, how many first years? We've got one, two, three, four, five. Because if your data set is enormous, this would take quite a bit of time. Now you can program Excel to make a count of each of these variables, but it's even faster simply to allow Excel to do all the work for you by using a pivot table. So how does a pivot table work? Click anywhere blank, choose insert, choose pivot table. The next question you're asked is what data do you want to place in this pivot table? I want to put all of this data in the pivot table and there are two very important rules. Number one, my data needs to have a title or a label in the very first slot. Year in college is my label. If that were missing, then Excel will steal your first data point and make that the label. So you need to have a label at the top of your data column. If you have multiple columns, they'll all have labels. In addition, none of this data can be blank or missing. So if any of these are blank, you need to fill them in. If you don't want to fill them in with a pretend variable, fill them in with another variable called missing because that will help you to see exactly which data you're missing without losing the integrity of your data. All right, so I want every bit of data in this range, including the heading, the field heading it's called, or the title. Once I circle it with my mouse, it places the range over here. Now I have two choices. I can open my pivot table in a new worksheet, which will appear down here, or I can open it right where I am. I'm gonna go ahead and open it right where I am. So I'll click OK. Once you do that, it sets up a pivot situation for you. Keeps your data over here. So let's scroll to the top so we can see everything. The only field or the only data set that I'm working with here is year in college. Here's the title of that in my pivot table field. If you're new to pivot tables, don't be alarmed. Once you get used to them, they're extraordinarily helpful. You can also click around and just kind of see what they'll do for you. For example, if I click year in college, it automatically discovers all the possible differences in this data set and it creates them for me over here. This is kind of, I'm halfway there now. This is exactly what I want to do, only over here I would also like to know how many first year seniors and sophomores I have. You can also reorder the data. Like for example, I, I want senior to be, I want it to be lower. So you can come down here and you can affect the field settings. You can uh, move things around. So I would like to move senior down. Okay, that's where I want that. But I actually don't want junior there either. I want to move junior down as well. So now they're in the order that I want them to be in. Whenever you're nervous or thinking of something new, just right click and see what options are there for you. All right, so let's see what else, let's see what else is going on now. Here I have my rows set as year in college. That's exactly what I'm looking at here. By clicking this box, Excel automatically put my year in college as my row definers. First row, first year. Second row, sophomore. Third row, junior. Fourth row, senior. That's great. That's actually exactly where I want them. But I also would like to have some values added to this table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this one data set represented by year in college over here under values. It doesn't take away anything else. It just replaces it or adds an instance of it into the values area. And notice what it does as default. It counts each one. This is the count 
of the year in college. There are 10 first years in my group, 7 sophomores, 7 juniors, 6 seniors. This is in fact exactly what I wanted and it's very, very fast. What's nice about this area is if I hit this arrow, I can reset these field values to anything I want. I can, well, some wouldn't make any difference, but I can find mins and maxes, averages, products. I can count them up, which is what I have here, and so on. And as we do other examples in other videos, we'll see how these other uh, calculations are extremely useful for us, but I don't want to do that now. Now I have exactly what I need. I know exactly how many first year sophomores, juniors, and seniors I have. What I want to do now is create that pie chart. So I'm going to click outside of the pivot table just to show you that when you do that, all this goodies here, all the pivot table goodies disappears. It gives you space to work. If you want it to come back, just click anywhere inside your pivot table and it will return. All right, now let's say we would like to add a a chart of some kind. Just showing you how that works again. All right, so let's come up here and insert a chart. We could do a bar chart and just by hovering over without clicking, it shows you all the different charts that you can actually make. We don't want a bar chart though, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. What we're looking for is a pie graph. And again, when you hover over the pies, it'll show you all the different pies and what they look like. So many options. What we're looking for is just a standard pie graph, so I'm going to now click that. And I'm going to scooch this down just a little bit so we can see what's going on. This is a standard pie graph. It labels, it's color coded. That's nice, but I want to make some changes. First, I want to change the title to um, year in school. Okay. And I also would like to make some updates over here. I would like to add percentages to these pies. So I'm going to double click one of the pies here and I'm going to look and see what my options are. Sometimes it gets very, very big, so I just scooch it back over and I'm going to scooch this over too so I can sort of see what's going on. Now I'm going to click again on this and I'm going to right click. And what I would like to do here is I would like to add data labels. All right, so that's great, but I don't really want them to be numbers. I kind of want them to be percentages instead. So I'm going to click on one of them, which highlights all of them. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to change the label format. So I want to format these data labels so that they are actually percentages instead of values. Now, see what it did to me? It does that. Um, so I'm just going to start over. Format data series, no big deal. Add data label, okay. Just redoing what I just did. Right click, format data labels. I would like it to be the percentage. I'll go ahead and click that first and then unclick the value so that it doesn't make this go away before I get to do what I meant to do. Now I'm done though, and that's great. This pie chart is exactly the way I want it to look and it compares each of the years in school as percentages. I can move these boxes around if I wish. I can format them. I can click on home and I can make them bigger. I can change their color and so on. You can do many things in Excel. But the key here is that it's a lot easier to make a pie graph in Excel using the pivot table option. So let's review what we did. We started here with our regular data. We took the data of interest, we copied it, we added a sheet, and we pasted it in a new location. We used then insert pivot table. We selected the data that we wanted to be in the pivot table. We made sure that we had a label at the very top of our data and that no data values are missing. We put it in the existing worksheet. We clicked OK. Now I'm going to scooch this over here a little more so you can see it better. Year in college is the only column of data we have. If you click it, it starts creating a pivot table for you. If you drag it over to values, it defaults to count and will add to the row the count of each of these groups. 
Then we can either insert a chart or just come right over here to pivot chart, choose a pie, that's the chart that we want, so we'll click OK, and then go through that same process again where we change the title, and where we click here, right click, add data labels, but we don't want those data labels to be numbers, we want percentages, so we'll click them, right click, format the data labels, choose percentage before you unchoose value, and then we close that right back up, and we've got our pie chart. I hope this was helpful, and keep a lookout for the rest of my videos. Thank you.